Here are 30 extremely hidden features and secrets that you didn't know existed in Dead by Daylight. If you look up to the sky while you're playing as the Blight, you can see a little dot that follows you everywhere. I do not know what this could possibly be, but you're welcome for making you aware that it exists and now you won't stop looking at it. I don't know if it's just a visual bug or if it's like something that has to be there for like the, the map to register where you are in the map because he's so fast. I don't know. Maybe it's some sort of game development thing. I don't know. On the new Shelter Woods map, you can see Ada's clothes on the Skull Merchant's bed. Does this mean what I think it means, or am I reading too far into this? There is a secret unused status effect that does not actually appear in-game, yet it still has an effect. This status effect looks like this, and it's called Hearing, which is honestly a very misleading title. This is the debuff that makes you deafened and removes your hearing. It only comes to play with firecrackers, flash grenades, Hag's disfigured ear add-on, or the killer perk knockout. I have absolutely zero clue why it doesn't actually show the status effect, but it is there. In my last video where I talked about 100 tips, tricks, and secrets for DBD, I showed you guys that there is a bell on the outside of Gas Heaven that rings every time you walk through the door, but on the newest update in the PTB right now, they updated this map to make it a little more balanced. For those of you who don't know, they kind of split up those long car walls and moved the main building a little bit more towards the center. But now, if you ring the Gas Heaven bell 100 times, I don't know why anybody would ever do this, but if you ring it 100 times, it'll change to the sound of the Wraith's bell bell, which makes sense given that this is Wraith's map and is very interconnected with his lore. If you're playing as the knight, the game counts your body as where you are on the map. So if you're spotting a guard on a patrol path, the game will still think that your body is where you started the patrol path. This means that if you're using a perk such as Make Your Choice or Hex Devour Hope that only activate when you're far away from an unhooked survivor, you can still summon a guard nearby the hooked survivor without the perks deactivating. On Larry's, there is a jump scare that'll appear on one of the TV monitors. I've only ever been able to trigger this once, and I think there's certain steps to make it trigger and I just don't know what those are. But this is what the jump scare looks like. There's also a very, very cool detail where the large TVs in the middle of Larry's will go all glitchy and staticky every single time the doctor uses his static blast in that area. It's a really neat detail because his static blast kind of messes with the electricity, so it makes sense. Your sickness meter when playing against the plague will not progress if you're walking. So if you need to prevent yourself from becoming sick for whatever reason, you can just walk around the entire map. But if you want to be a good teammate, please do not do that. The two new survivors that were just released into the game are technically siblings in their lore. There's a really cool mechanic with them where they will speak to each other in Portuguese if they're in the same lobby together. This video is sponsored by my Discord server. Come join, link in the description. In the new Dead by Daylight update that is currently playable on the public test build, the Lament configuration while the killer is playing Pinhead will move if they stand on it for five seconds. This could be used strategically, I guess, but this feature was most likely added so the killer couldn't just stand on the box and prevent survivors from ever interacting with it. Because if the survivors could never interact with the box, they would just constantly be in chain hunt and constantly be getting hit by chains, and it would just be extremely annoying. In this new PTB, a couple of Auto Haven maps got reworked, and now the bus that's normally a fairly strong loop for survivors got split in half. This makes me extremely sad because I loved this loop so much and it's always been there since the beginning of the game, but it is very strong so I understand why they changed it. However, there are these new unsafe pallets that were added near the walls of the map to make the edges of the maps feel less dead. A lot of people know that there is a girl crying in the bathroom stall on Midwitch, but there is an interactive feature that will sometimes cause the girl to get scared if you do something that causes as a sound effect or something that, you know, would make somebody scared. I don't exactly know the exact details of how this works, and I've never heard of this before, so I'm thinking it's something new that Behavior just added recently, and it occurred very rarely, so I don't have a definitive list of killers this works on, but I did figure out that it works really well with Huntress, because if you throw a hatchet above the stall, it'll scare her. I also got it to trigger once while pulling out a Huntress hatchet, but that could have just been like a coincidence or it could have just, I don't know, it, it, it was just really finicky. There is also another hidden feature with the clock tower on Midwitch. If you're using Huntress, you can throw a hatchet near the top of the tower to cause the bell to ring. It's really hard to hit, but you'll be able to get it after like probably 10 to 20 tries.
It took me a while, but I finally found the sweet spot kind of near this bench. It's a pretty useless feature, but it's, it's cool. Why not? If you're hit by any killer power which makes you hindered, such as Freddy's snares or Clown's gas, you are unable to fast vault no matter how hard you try. So if you're wondering why you could never fast vault, this is why. If you're on the new Shattered Square map that came with the night chapter, go to this well that's near the big tree near the main building. You can occasionally hear something which I don't even know how to describe, honestly. If you go to the top story of the Garden of Joy main building, there is a room that is entirely upside down. However, the upside down clock is technically upside down, upside down. The body of the clock is upside down, yet the Roman numerals are all facing in the right direction. So the face of the clock is upside down, upside down, while the upside down body of the upside down clock is upside down. On the shattered square map, there are many dead rabbits hanging on various walls. There is a secret interaction that you can do if you're playing as Myers. It's not very helpful, Helpful, but it's still an extremely cool feature. Myers has this add-on called Dead Rapid that decreases his terror radius when he's in tier 2 and increases his terror radius when he's in tier 3. If you're playing as Myers on this map, standing next to any of these dead rabbits will grant you the same effect as though you have the add-on equipped. This is extremely niche, but it's such a cool mechanic that they added. It also stacks with Dead Rabbit if you're using it and monitor an abuse, so you can effectively have no terror radius whatsoever while standing beside one of the dead rabbits in tier two. Although I will say this is a much more complicated way of just using the Perk Insidious. If you stand next to the little computer server things on the new version of Shelter Woods, you can occasionally hear somebody speaking something. I have absolutely no idea what they're saying, but I found the audio file in the game files and we'll link it in the description in case any of you want to do, you know, your audio detective work on it. In the current lobby background that shows the newest version of Shelter Woods, you can occasionally see the mannequins move ever so slightly. Does this mean that the mannequins are alive? There is further evidence to prove this because if you go onto the map itself, there are a few mannequins that look like they've been severely injured and there's blood covering them as though they're human. If this is connected to the lore, please let me know in in the comments below. Before Oni was released, Behavior teased his chapter in the map that came out with the spirit. It showed Oni's mask on the wall with his katana. What a lot of people don't know is that if you play as the Oni and you go near the mask, you will hear this faint lullaby play. I assume that this is lore related, but again, I don't really know the lore, so if somebody knows what this might mean, let me know in the comments below. There is a secret interaction that has been added on the new version of Mother's Dwelling, and I have no idea what it does, so I'll need your help figuring out the next steps. There are these lanterns scattered around the map that you can interact with using specific characters. From my understanding, one singular lantern will be lit at a time and can be blown out by any character that makes like a large breathing sound, I guess. I've only gotten it to work with Nurse Plague and dredge, which is why I kind of said that it's a breathing sound. I don't really know how to describe it. It's by far the easiest to do with the dredge because you could just start your power and then cancel it and he makes the sound and makes the breathing action. After you quote unquote blow the lantern out, the flame seems to appear on a randomly selected lantern somewhere else. This is pretty much all I know, but maybe it has to do with like the golden toolbox on this map. I'm not sure. One thing that I see so many new players not realizing is that if you're on the main menu, you can click on the tab that says getting started and there are four different game modes that you can complete to give you up to 200,000 total blood points. So you can use this if you want to make it faster to level up one of your characters. There's also a game manual that explains almost every main Dead by Daylight mechanic that you may want to know. For example, you can see a list of every single status effect in the game and what they do. So it's a great way to learn a lot about the game in an organized fashion. Most people know that on the Sanctum of Wrath, the statues are like weeping angels and will look at you when you look away. But did you know if you are playing as the Onryo and you're D manifested, the statues will not do this. This is probably because she's very ghost-like, so the statues don't like detect her presence or whatever if she's not manifested into reality, but I believe she's the only one that completely ignores this interaction. However, if she is manifested, it still does it, which is why I think it's a feature and not a bug. On the map Eerie of Crows, there are many pictures and paintings scattered around the map. This feature is unfortunately Steam only, but if you press the F12 button to take a Steam screenshot of the main painting 
on the top story of the main building, it'll look like this in the screenshot. I don't know if this is just a visual bug or if it's an intended feature, but it's cool nonetheless. It's also extremely creepy and I hate it. On Larry's, there are a ton of these little fire alarm things around the map. If you use any ranged killer, such as Huntress, Deathslinger, or Trickster, you can activate each of these alarms by using your power on them. Once you hit every single one on the map, the lighting will turn very dark and will become a deep red color. It was extremely difficult to find every single fire alarm trigger around the map because a lot of them are very well hidden. But once you do hit the last one, it'll do this and it also makes your screen look like you're a part of a TV, which is really cool. Something I personally didn't know until very, very recently is that the filter will actually disappear completely if the last generator is finished. This is a super cool touch because it kind of makes sense that like the generators bring light, I guess. This next feature is one of the most elaborate things that I think I've seen in DBD to date, but there seems to be a new Easter egg on the new version of Temple of Purgation. I've tried to mess around with it for a couple of hours, but I can't seem to figure much out. I noticed that in the bottom story of the main building, there's a lot of things that just really stand out to me and look like puzzles. So this immediately made me very sus. The first thing I noticed when I came down here that kind of triggered my, my, my gamer instincts is these little brass colored like cup things that the statues are holding. They are so unbelievably like stand out-ish and they just have this color that makes them very vibrant compared to the wall and the statues. So to me, I was like, okay, this is important for some reason. And now I tried a ton of different things, including like using plague to interact with them, but nothing was really working. Then I realized they're cups. So maybe we're supposed to fill them with something. And uh, as you can probably guess, this is Plague's map. So what would you fill the cups with if you're using plague? That's right. I tried aiming my puke to land in it perfectly, but nothing was happening, which was really confusing because I thought I thought that was going to be the answer. But then I remembered something very vital to the Plague's character. And it's like one of the only lore things that I know. The reason that she's in the Entity's realm to begin with is because she sacrificed herself to the Entity in order to save her people from a plague. Like, like an actual plague, like a disease. So I started thinking, is there a way to sacrifice anything? Well, this is Dead by Daylight and survivors get sacrificed. So I tried so many different combinations of survivors getting sacrificed, but nothing seemed to work. Also, I was using bots for this because I didn't want to bother my friends with spending hours and hours on trying to figure out what this was. But the bots obviously complete gens while I'm trying to test things out. And the gates on the bottom floor opened when they finished the last gen, which obviously this has been around for a while. And it happens also if the downstairs generator is completed as well. So I went inside the gates and noticed something. The brass cup on this statue in particular is facing directly towards the center of the room, directly towards this coffin thing. And I started started thinking, trying to connect the dots, and I made a sudden realization. I assume we need to sacrifice something in order to fill the cup based on the trial and error that I've done and knowing some of the lore. So what can we quote unquote sacrifice in the middle of the room? Like, can we sacrifice something on this coffin? And then I realized, Victor, you heard me right. I remember that there's this certain mechanic with the twins that prevents Victor from doing various parkour jump spots. So if he jumps into any area that's normally inaccessible, he will die. Sure enough, when I jumped on top of the coffin as Victor, he died. There was a sound cue and the cups started glowing. Apart from that, nothing seemed to change around the map until I looked at the rugs in the same exact room. I only found two of these rugs, but both of them had a different pattern glowing on them. I looked at my old recordings and these were not glowing prior to completing the sacrifice step with Victor. So I'm assuming that this is some sort of elaborate puzzle. However, by this point, my brain was completely fried. So if anybody knows what these patterns could possibly be used for, please let me know. If you are playing as the new Skull Merchant Killer on the new version of Shelter Woods, you can come up to the monitor that says camera feed lost and inspect your radar in front of the monitor. This will make a beep sound and sometimes it will create a new feed on the monitor itself. It would only work every once in a while though, and I don't really know what this is or if it's relevant to anything, but it's a cool Easter egg nonetheless. If you come up to this group of gravestones on the Eerie of Crows map and look into this like dark window thing here, there are a few things that you may be able to see. The first and most common thing that I've seen is just some like movement inside of it. So obviously there's something in there and that is terrifying. The next most common thing that I've seen is a pair of eyes kind of like opening and closing. I, I mean, it looks 
looks like a pair of eyes to me, but it, it could be something entirely different, I guess. And the only other thing that I've been able to figure out with this thing is if you're using the artist, you can place a crow facing it and then launch the crow. And it makes this extremely weird sound. And then the movement and the eyes never appear again after that for the rest of the match. Again, I don't really know any lore. So if this is lore related, somebody please let me know in the comments below. On RPD, there is a zombie outside one of the windows. If you listen really closely, there is occasionally a recognizable sound that plays in the distance. <laughs> On RPD, there is a vending machine that has a sticker saying, please do not shake the machine. It will not deliver any items. This is a really cool feature that Behavior added to Dead by Daylight because if you do shake the machine, it will in fact not deliver any items. If you guys learned something new, drop a like and subscribe down below. Also, if you know any other steps to any of the secrets in this video or know any other secrets, let me know in the comments below.